Living Corporate is brought to you by The Access Point. The reality is, this is the largest influx of black and brown talent corporate America has ever had. And as a result, a variety of talent entering the workforce are first generation professionals. The other reality, most of these folks aren't learning what it means to navigate a majority white workplace in their college classes. Enter The Access Point, a live weekly web show within the Living Corporate Network that gives black and brown college students the real talk they need and likely haven't heard elsewhere. Every week, our hosts and special guests are dropping gems, so don't miss out. Check out The Access Point, airing every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard on livingcorporate.tv. Hey, everybody, this is See It to Be It, the Saturday podcast from Living Corporate. Living Corporate is a digital media network that centers and amplifies black and brown people at work. My name is Amy C. Wanninger. I'm the host of See It to Be It. When I was growing up in rural southern Indiana, I didn't know people who went to college or who worked in professional roles. I didn't know what those jobs looked like or how to break into them. But this show isn't about me. It's about my guests. Every Saturday, I bring you career stories from everyday role models in jobs you may not know exist. More importantly, the folks I interview share their perspectives as black and brown professionals in jobs and environments where they may be the only. My guest today is Jamar Jones, who runs Relatable Marketing. He also happens to be the leader of my marketing team for Lead at Any Level. But before we get to the interview, we're going to tap in with Tristan for some career advice. What's going on, y'all? It's Tristan of Layfield Resume Consulting, and I've teamed up with Living Corporate to bring you all a weekly career tip. This week, let's talk about three things I think all professionals need to schedule regularly. Do you know when the best time to find a job is? Well, let me help you out. The answer is when you're not looking for one. Searching for a job can be stressful. Think about it. Trying to not only remember what you did the last four years of your career, but also having to write it down in a compelling way. Attending a ton of events in a short amount of time to try and make new connections in hopes that that uncomfortable first interaction leads to a career. Connecting with people on the internet thinking that maybe, just maybe, someone will reach out with an opportunity. All of that induces a ton of anxiety and honestly doesn't position you for success in your job search. That's why I think there are three things that all professionals, no matter if they love or hate their job, should schedule on their calendars to help them in landing their next role. The first thing is time to update your resume. As I said earlier, trying to update your resume after four years of not touching it is the worst, especially if you find that the application is due tomorrow or someone says, hey, shoot your resume over to me now and I'll see what I can do. If you put 30 minutes on your calendar every month to update your resume while everything is pretty fresh in your brain, you'll keep yourself out of those binds because your resume will always be ready. The second thing that should be on your calendar is time for LinkedIn. Being active on LinkedIn can build up your network, which in turn can help you in your job search. But being proactive about this allows you to build genuine, authentic connections that makes people want to help you in whatever way they can. There are a few things I suggest you get on your calendar when it comes to LinkedIn. First, I suggest scheduling a time to update your profile monthly around the same time you update your resume. Second, make some time to create posts and engage with other people a couple of times a week at least. The third thing is time to network. Since most jobs are filled through referrals, this is key. The best time to build and warm up your network is when you don't need them. But remember, networking doesn't always mean going to events. It also means warming up connections you haven't talked to in a while. Since all connections run in different circles, they tend to provide different information than what you or your inner circle have access to. And you two already have previously established rapport, so they are more likely to help you. Having these things on your calendar at regular intervals will help you remain accountable and also set you up for when you really need that new job. This tip was brought to you by Tristan of Layfield Resume Consulting. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Layfield Resume or connect with me, Tristan Layfield, on LinkedIn. Living Corporate is brought to you by The Leadership Range, a podcast within the Living Corporate Network. 
hosted by globally certified and Fortune 500 executive coach and leadership development expert Neil Edwards. The leadership range is focused on having real, raw, soulful and accountable conversations about inclusive leadership, allyship, professional development. Every week is a new episode with new learning and new actions to take on to grow inclusively. Make sure you check out the leadership range everywhere you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to See It To Be It. My guest today is Jamar Jones. Jamar is a specialist in video marketing branding, and he's also a marketing architect, speaker, motivator, creator, gamer, and comic book enthusiast. He is the author of the forthcoming book, Change Your Circle, Change Your Life. And he has the dubious distinction of being uh, the marketing brainiac behind everything that's going to come to you from lead at any level this year and for the foreseeable future. Welcome, Jamar, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, what an intro. I mean, I got so many taglines. I need to have a whole paragraph just for taglines. <laughs> you do. You got a lot of titles and um, you wear a lot of hats. I know at Relatable I Marketing. Do. Can you tell us a little bit about your role there? Yes, yeah, so I'm the uh, the owner of uh, Relatable Marketing, um, and I just you know I'm just like a, an orchestrator. You know, I just you know make sure that everybody is uh, going the right direction, lead them where they need to go, um, and we get to be a part of some amazing uh, projects. We have amazing clients that we work with. Um, pretty much everyone we work with, uh, I absolutely adore and love. So um, that's really a big principle for me. And uh, yeah, we do a lot of things within sales and marketing um, and really diving deep into people's brands and messaging and figuring out the best way uh, for their message to be relatable. How did you get started in this work? Yes. uh, So I got started um, after I was uh, laid off at my job, uh, I did eight years of IT, I was an IT manager. And uh, after 45 people got laid off, you know, I was like, you know, I just wanna do something for myself. Um, I really just, you know, I was always a self-motivated individual. And I was like, you know, I could do, I could try to do something and, uh, and create something on my own. So then I started Forever Productions and that's really our uh, video production division um, within the company. So. We, you know, the video and photography stuff just took off um, as I had a bunch of services to, to start with and just hustled. I mean, it was it was night and day just hustling and um, and making as many connections with people as possible. Um, and really, the marketing side came from and the more I think about it, it really came from because uh, I did a lot of music uh, back then. So. Um, I take kind of those principles of, of music and how, to, how you market as a musician um, into uh, marketing for businesses. Um, and then really, that's kind of at the core. And I really just had that realization probably um, a few months ago where I'm like, that's kind of where a lot of this stuff is, is uh, being born <laughs> from. So, and I just love, I love to take people's visions and, um, and just accelerate them. What I love about working with you is that we'll have a conversation, right? I think we're just talking. And then I go look at the project plan that you're creating and you've captured everything I've thought about and figured out, okay, here are the pieces that need to happen. Here's what needs to, you know, here's how all this is going to fit together and how we're going to sequence this. And it's, it's this amazing thing that you do. It's not just marketing, but you are, you translate the vision into what it's going to be in a way that even I can't do for my own business. Mm. And I think that's incredible. And it's, it's not surprising to me that you have an IT background because you're able to see the big picture and then break it out into, exactly. into chunks. <laughs> you have to be able to do that. Um, and, and, you know, some people kind of are on one side uh, of the spectrum. Um, and I feel like I can take the big vision, break it into pieces and then figure out how to get there. So thank you. That's such a good compliment. Yeah. No, it's, it's always impressive to me. Every time we talk, I don't think that we've covered anything that's useful to you. And then I look and see, oh, apparently it was useful to you because you've, you've run with it and it's amazing. (laughs) And I didn't know what I was getting into when I hired a marketing team. um, But I almost cried with excitement that I didn't have to do everything anymore. And uh, it's been amazing. It's been amazing working with you and your team. Awesome. Our pleasure. So, um, you know, 
gosh, just digital marketing in general is so big. It's changing all the time. Um, and I know with a tech background, it helps, but how do you stay up on, I mean, every week there's some new platform, there's some new something, right. To learn, to do, to, to pitch on, how do you stay up with all of that? Um, I've always been a bookworm, um, at heart. So anything, I really just become obsessive with figuring out, um, kind of what the next big thing is. Um, how do I constantly make myself better? Um, and constantly challenging myself. Um, what things do I not know that I can apply directly into my business or even my personal life? And, uh, and, and staying on top of trends, um, I think for me is relatively easy. Um, I think it's uh, the hard part is like, is keeping up because of social media and the internet, there's so much that, that, that is out there and you kind of need to pick lanes um, and then just explore those. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's even with digitals, um, uh, NFTs, so like selling like uh, um, uh, illustrations and on a digital platform um, and where nobody else can sell it. Um, so like your elite at any level, like let's say that's your digital piece that you could then sell for X amount of money. Um, and I guess this space is growing, um, but there's like stuff like that that I don't really know a lot about. Um, And, you know, I'm interested and I'm intrigued to figure out more um, about that. So it really is just constantly just um, really just involving myself as much as possible um, into different trends and just getting um, just getting a piece of it. Um, You know, a lot of people, they have tons and tons of opinions and comments about about things that they've never experienced themselves, Um, you know, especially on like social media platforms. Ah, we don't need to be a part of that. Have you ever even, you know, spent an hour or two in TikTok? Have you even just tried um, just to understand it? So I think it's just more about, you know, seeking to understand. Yeah. And in answer to your rhetorical question, no, I have not spent even one minute on TikTok because I am too old <laughs> and I can't do anything else. I'm done. Twitter was it for me. <laughs> as soon as yeah. as soon as I got comfortable with Twitter, I was like, this is it. I will never again learn another social media platform. So <laughs> if, if Twitter goes away, I will just... I'll go off the grid and be a hermit in the woods. <laughs> Can't do it. Well, you're really good at Twitter. So I mean, you've had some really good success on Twitter. So yeah, I've, I have a lot I of fun on Twitter. You. Made a lot of good people there. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit, Jamar, about who's your target market for relatable marketing? Like what's your ideal client look like? And I know it looks exactly like me, but um, you probably have a different avatar in mind, or maybe you do. Tell us, you know, who, who needs you? Yeah. And I think, you know, for us with marketing, you know, in our, the way how we do it, uh, we can truly help so many different um, lanes and industries. Uh, but uh, the one that we, uh, there's two that in particular that we love to work with. And one is um, speakers, trainers, coaches, um, just because we've been in this world for so long. Um, and speakers are just a joy to work with. <laughs> They're so appreciative. They, they, they really love the leaps and bounds that you can do for them. Um, and then you can actually really see some real growth because it's usually one or two individuals and they're able to take some chances. They're able to move a lot faster than a, than a mega corporation um, can. Um, and then the second one is that, you know, industries that have uh, teams that they have like a couple people in sales, couple people in the marketing department, um, and they work with a ton of different vendors. Um, that is really our lane because we can bring the strategic element to there from an outside point of view and really get people focused, uh, get them organized, um, and then also, you know, really drive a lot of content. Um, so really become a content powerhouse for them. So that way they're like, hey, I wish we could do all this stuff, but I just don't know how to. Well, we have the the horsepower to be able to do that in house. And then, um, and I just love working with different people and different teams and then bringing them all together for a common goal. Where do you go for support in this work? Because, you know, being an entrepreneur can be um, very isolating. And even though you have a team of people that work for you, right, they're not your peers necessarily. Where do you go for support? Such a good question. And it's a little bit of a piece into, into my upcoming book that's, uh, that's in there. Um, but it's, it's great to have a good support circle. 
And um, I would say that my support circle is not necessarily people that are um, hyper into marketing, but it, it's hyper into growing business. Um, so it's great to be in different mastermind groups and things like that to really just kick off ideas. Um, but I have a really good core uh, group of friends that are all either business owners or, you know, some uh, place in the company where they have to make big decisions. And, you know, I kick off a lot of ideas, bounce a lot of things off there. If I'm stressed, um, I just, you know, uh, vent a little bit <laughs> to them. And then they give me really good constructive uh, feedback and, and how I can um, adapt and learn from that um, and, and, change, uh, and change what's happening. So um, I have about, I would say at least about five, five individuals that I constantly just kick off ideas to. It's so important because we can go too far down a path. I do this all the time. I'll get really excited about an idea and I start running with it. You've seen this a thousand times. And then I realize like, oh no, nobody's going to want this. And <laughs> I've wasted, you know, a couple of weeks or, you know, a lot of, a lot of mental energy um, right. until I come back to it. And then I figure out a way to kind of fit it, you know, fit it into something that, that can work. Um, but it is so important to have people around you that you can just say like, okay, tell me, does this make sense? Does it not? Yes. Yes. But there's different types too. Uh, me and uh, me and Randy were just talking about this too. There's different types of people that you need in different stages of an idea. Sometimes like when you have an initial idea, you just need a hype man. You know, you just need somebody to just hype it up and, you know, just give you a little bit of juice and say, yeah, yeah, we could do this. We could do that. We could do this. And then when you actually get a little bit of structure on it, then you need somebody to bring you back down to earth <laughs> and somebody that's a little more hyper analytical about how it's all going to happen, what things you should consider. Um, and so those two individuals, I feel like, you know, if people are trying to find like, who, who do I need in my, in my circle, find at least those two um, spectrums to it because that will give birth to an idea. And then also how do you actually implement it? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your book. It is okay. called change your circle, change your life. It's about your network, yes. which it, most people know is near and dear to my heart. My first book was about networking as well. Yes. What inspired you to write this? Uh, why this book? Why now? Yeah, I, I should have wrote this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm finally doing it. Um, you know, really thanks to you. I mean, you're, you, you gave, definitely gave me a little bit of, uh, you know, the right person to talk to and, um, and just to be able to actually bring it to life. You know, um, I always had excuses, you know, like, ah, I need to, do I need to do this need to do that. And, you know, writing a book is so daunting. You know, you just have, it's like this gigantic goal. It's like winning a championship. Um, and it's like, how do I get there? Um, and so, yeah, no, I have to thank you a lot for, um, even all the books that you've published and, and things that you've done. I mean, that's, that's inspirational for me. And I'm like, you know, I work with all these speakers, everybody's got books. I need a book. <laughs> so this, um, this idea is something that I I've had for, for a while now. Um, so the concept was relatively easy for me to come up with because really it's directly, um, affected in my life where my direct circle was the reason why I did anything. Um, and once I started to change my circle, um, it, it ultimately changed my life and the way I operate, the way I think, um, how I go about my day, um, what my goals are, and the different people that you're around can really alter your reality um, of exactly you know, what you need to be going for, how do I get there? Um, and so the, the Change Your Circle, Change Your Life is, is really a book to, um, that once you read it and take the action uh, steps in it, I truly believe that you would you will be able to change your life, um, no matter what your circumstances. Um, it's it's something that uh, I know there's extremes of circumstances uh, that are out there, so I can't think of um, the millions and millions of variables that are out there. But I know that the general consensus that they would actually be able to change their life. Yeah, I agree. I think even being around people who can see things that are possible that you've never considered is a game changer. Yes. And to me, 100%. that's the biggest one because I didn't grow up in a place of possibilities. I didn't grow up with, with um, I didn't grow up in the dream big crowd, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And getting around the, the dream big crowd, huge, yes. huge perspective shift for me. Yes. I mean, the, the people that are just on a different level than you, and that's why, you know, there's that, uh, that saying that if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out. 
Um, you need to be pretty much the dumbest person in the room and soaking up all that knowledge from others. Cause when somebody else experiences something that you didn't even think was possible, but they're on this level and you're, you're down here. Um, it just opens your mind. Like, look at the way that they speak, their candor, you know, how they approach uh, problems and, and what is a problem to them. Um, something for me, it could be an astronomical problem for them. It's like, yeah, that's something I'll take care of it later. You know, well, we got bigger things to, to work on. It's just like, wow, that's just such a different mindset. And, um, and that's so the book uh, itself is 50% mindset and 50% action because you need both to be able to change your life. Oh, that is so true. And all the action in the world won't get you there if your mindset isn't there because exactly. you'll undermine yourself. Yeah. You'll take a step and then you'll take two steps backward and you'll end up right where you are if you don't change your mindset first. So I think exactly. that's brilliant. Exactly. I think that's brilliant. So I'm curious, um, you know, you've been, you are in Minneapolis, right? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, Milwaukee. Gone it. It's I all think kind I, of the I think same I do this Midwest, every time, you know? right? <laughs> it's all so the there, same area. So there are people who don't know the difference between Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. I don't know yeah. the difference between Wisconsin and Minnesota. <laughs> so It's I'm pretty just much a snow tundra <laughs> just up here. <laughs> just people just slap yeah. the both of them together. <laughs> so, so what's it been like up there, um, you know, this past year during COVID with all the you know, has the civil unrest and, and all of the, um, you know, the kind of the clash between the Black Lives Matter protests uh, in the summer and then this weird, you know, like insurrection conspiracy theory thing happening in the fall. Like what's going on where you are? <laughs> yeah. Um, are there warring yeah. factions? Are there traveling nomads? Or <laughs> what's happening up there? Are there giant robots in the streets? <laughs> um, I mean, there's... I, I would say that um, the conversations as far as with, uh, you know, the, the, like you say, the civil unrest, you know, as far as with, um, you know, having the diversity within the workplace, but also, um, you know, the racial um, issues that are out there. I feel like that conversation is still being had, at least where, where I'm at. I see a lot more things. I'm invited to different um, conversations and groups to just provide my own perspective um, on things. So I like that at least people are more aware of it than ever. As far as right now, we just got to make sure it doesn't lose steam um, of, of what's happening. And then, you know, continue the conversation because it's not going to change overnight. Um, people, you know, they, they want change. They want it now. We want the instant gratification. And it, it just doesn't happen that way. We need to truly conversate about it. And then what kind of actions can we take off of each conversation? Um, and, and really get more people involved and really make this, um, make some leaps and bounds. Um, yeah, I would say that, you know, it's a, it's probably as far as like, you know, the political stuff that's going on, it just depends on where you live and, and, and what your views are, um, of what's, of what's happening up here. I know, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm primarily in a, like a suburban you know, community, um, but I'm connected with a lot of people within the city of inner city. And, um, and so I, I got both sides kind of of the, of the spectrum. Um, and, and I get to hear both of them, you know, um, which kind of makes it makes, I have a unique perspective on that, on everything. Um, and I just know that you got to continue conversation. Um, I don't have all the answers. I don't know all the solutions that will, that will get, uh, get us from um, this point to a better point. Um, but I do know that if we continue to talk about it, that's what's going to, you know, make sure that we make the right decision. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because I, you know, you don't think about the Midwest of being a hotbed of these kinds of conversations, but then, you know, of course, Minneapolis was kind of the the epicenter last year, of, yes. you know, kind of of the um, kind of the reprisal of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I, you know, I have friends in different places, right? I have friends in Portland and Portland was like super crazy last summer. Yes. Um, yes. You know, I mean, I have a friend in Portland who like, she won't leave her house. She has somebody like deliver things to her. She's afraid to even leave her house because wow. of some of the stuff that goes on in the neighborhoods around her. Yeah. Um, you know, I know things in Texas have been crazy. Like, it's just, it's just interesting to me to hear like how people are experiencing this in different parts of the country. Um, and particularly in different Midwestern states where, you know, in the Midwest, we don't talk about stuff like this, right? Yeah. This is these, we don't talk about race, right? And, um, 
or at least white people in the Midwest don't talk about race. I should be very clear. And, uh, you know, I, I just think it's fascinating that these conversations are happening in different places and in different, different communities than they used to. Um, right. and so, you know, the nature of my question was more around the, uh, the geographical experience. Oh right, yeah. Of, of being, well, you know, I know there's been some issues that have, that have come up within, you know, in Wisconsin, for sure. Like there's been um, the, the one that made national news on, in Kenosha, um, as far as in the like whole cities were, you know, rioted over, um, uh, over a shooting. Um, and, you know, the thing is, like, I, I think that any of these issues that are happening, that's why I say conversation is so important because, you know, of course, depending on what kind of media you listen to, what kind of narrative that you're being fed, you know, that that's why people need to talk about it. I just feel like people get this, you know, they, they hear one thing and then they just run with it, you know, like to, and they jam it right through the ground. And it's like, wait, 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 there's a lot of, that's just one person's side of the story. You can, let's listen to everybody and actually have a general consensus of like, what is the, as a jury of like, Hey, how, how is this happening? What are all the facts so that we can talk about it? Um, and, and I think people just, you know, they, they take this thing and then they go out and riot. And it's like, I get it. They're, you know, we're, we're pissed off. We want some action. We want some stuff to happen, but honestly, burning your own communities is not the answer. Um, people like as a business owner, I would be really upset if <laughs> somebody came down and burned, burnt up what I built over some, some, something else. Yeah. Um, I get the message, but at the same time, it's like th that now you're affecting my world of, of the little thing that I can hold on to, to say that's mine. And so that's why I'm like, let's just talk about it. And then let's create some action of how, how we actually can take the steps forward to, to make a difference. I'm curious, how is this showing up in the marketing space right now? Because you do a lot of marketing with smaller companies, um, but there's so much, there's so much in the national discourse, right? There's so much in the local, in local community conversations um, around, you know, racial justice right now. Um, how is this showing up in the work that you're doing in the marketing that you're doing for small companies? Um, some, um, and I wouldn't say it's a, it's a majority of, of when people come to us. Um, but the, the couple cases that we've had, um, people want to figure out, you know, how to speak to certain demographics. Um, and the, the interesting thing about us is that we have a very diverse team. So it's, it's really good to, that we can speak from all different types of backgrounds and cultures to be able to give the right, um, you know, feedback uh, when it comes to that. And, and I would say that it, it's probably going to happen more and more um, as people are um, noticing this because they're really being um, particular about how they want to speak, you know, to um, different demographic, different markets um, and, where, and where people are at. So that way, and, and our whole thing is to make it, make it that it's relatable. And that's something that, you know, you have to make that messaging something that really resonates with somebody. Um, so that way you're speaking to them, not at them. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard. Um, so you mentioned Randy earlier. Randy is uh, one of the people on your team, right? Yes. And yes. Randy Good friend helped, of mine. Yep. Yeah. Randy helped me with some, with some um, slides, some PowerPoint slides. Mm -hmm. And we had a very long conversation about the, um, the, stock photos in yes. the presentation. I don't know if you yes. relate any of this to you, but we got like three slides. We, <laughs> we got three <laughs> slides in. I said, Randy, we got to stop. Um, <laughs> there's too many white people in my slides. <laughs> and, and he kind of, he kind of looked at me funny. And I said, I know you're limited by, you know, by this stock photo site and the stock photo site, but I'm going to give you links to others um, right. because this really has to include everyone, right? Everybody needs to see themselves in this quickly, or yes. I'm going to lose them. And because of the, you know, the specific topic and the audiences that I speak to yes, and just the kind of person I want to be right. I, I don't, I don't want people to think that I'm only talking to people that look like me. And, uh, and I, I especially don't want the people that look like me to think that I'm only talking to them because that's when they tune, right. That's when people tune me out is when they think that <laughs> I'm targeting them, right. even when I am, right. um, don't tell them I said that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But it was just, it was such a funny conversation because we'd get to another slide and be like, nope, all those hands are white, change them. Nope, all this, you know, it's all, that's all, all dudes can't have all dudes. And I think I was frustrating him. So I'm sure you heard about that, but, (laughs) but (laughs) it's a little bit, right. It's important, not just in our marketing, but I mean, you know, that's part of, you know, it's part of a brand statement, but it's also part of, you know, who's welcome here. Yes. And who's not. Yes. Visually. Um, we, we talk about uh, presentation a lot um, as far as for what you're outwardly putting out there is that's people's perception. So you need to start changing the way you present things. Um, and so I like that you, you know, looked, looked at that presentation and said like, hey, well, we need to change up some of this stuff. The, the reason why it's easy to go maybe down the route that he started to go is because that's just that's just common, you know, it's, it's, if you look at a lot of the, the stock photos or um, different platforms or systems that are out there, the common things is, you know, um, white, you know, posing, um, you know, and then uh, primarily male, you know, as far as a lot of, a lot of those things. And I know it's slowly starting to change, but there's a gigantic, you know, library of that stuff. Um, and it's and it's starting to change. So you have to kind of dig around to find the, the good stuff, you know, to find to find all the diversity and all, all the other things. So um, it's good because you got to make sure that what you're presenting out is um, is what you believe in and what you and and that's really how you're communicating. You know, um, it's it's everybody. I know people don't say like, oh, don't judge. Here's here's the truth. The truth is that people do always have for that split second. It's just in our nature to just judge for a second because we have to like, our mind has to put you somewhere and, and to understand and articulate what's, what's happening. Um, but then, you know, through conversation, through all that stuff, that's how you can change the perception. That's how you can change whatever that box is. But initially when you see somebody on the street, it's like your brain just automatically like tries to figure it out. Um, and so like when people see your presentation, yeah, they want to know, you know, like if, if this, if they're seeing you for the first time, they're already starting to put you in some kind of little box when it's like, don't box me in, don't do that. Um, but it's like, you know, they're already starting to, and then you want that presentation to kind of speak for you for itself of like, Hey, this is all types of walks of life in here. This is all type of imagery, things that you can relate to. I'm speaking to everybody, not just a certain type of person. Yeah. The, the stock photo thing is so frustrating. Um, and I've found that I can't even, you know, there are certain stock photo sites I use, they're paid sites. Um, but when I search for images, I can't do that when my kids are around. Because if I right. search like women, business suit, um, coffee, right? right? It's a woman in, in stilettos and a thong, I know. right? It's Leaning so over a desk seductively yes. with a coffee cup. And I'm like, come on like that's not what she searched right right (laughs) putting putting woman in in the search bar uh is not you know an invitation to pull pull up a screen of softcore porn right right but you know that's how the search engines work um in those in those tools and i don't know who uses those photos but it ain't me um you know but similarly a lot of times if you put in you know if you try to sort or filter on race or ethnicity or ability, you know, you're very limited or the small selection, yeah. very limited. And, and the images are often very stereotypical, not what you're, you know, they, they portray exactly the wrong image um, right. of what you're trying to convey. And so I've been really fortunate that, you know, I'm in, in circles where people will share, you know, links to um, stock photos, you know, by for um, and of, uh, people of color, you know, black people, Hispanic right. people, trans people. There's a whole stock mm-hmm. photo side of trans people um, and gender nonconforming folks, which is awesome, you know, to yeah. have those high quality photos. But man, you got to dig for that stuff sometimes. Yes. Yes. I mean, and, and that's just through change, you know, mm-hmm. um, people could sometimes forget just where where we uh, came from. And, and, and it takes time to change. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, um, like I said, and it's something that you know, over time, we will see kind of a new, a new yeah. uh, normal for that. Yeah, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to reset norms. Yes. And to, to move that conversation in any way that we can. So yes, for sure. So Jamar, if someone is looking for a brilliant, brilliant marketing strategist with a 
and I'm going to just say with price points that are friendly for people who are just starting out in their businesses. Right. right. Because the whole conversation that you and I had, um, and I don't want to make this whole commercial about relatable marketing, except <laughs> kind of do um, because <laughs> you guys are great. Um, but you know, the, you have the price points that kind of start low and then it's kind of a grow with me pricing model. Right. So exactly. as I grow, I can, we've had this conversation, the more I grow, the better I do, the better you guys are going to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. Um, so if someone is looking for uh, genius marketing at reasonable rates that scales, how can they reach you? Yeah. Um, the best way to reach me directly right now would be LinkedIn. Um, okay. So you can search Jamar Jones on there, but of course you can go to relatablemarketplace.com. Um, and then we have our site there. We are currently working on um, some new exciting things, some rebranding um, around that. We're keeping the relatable marketing, but it's going to be a division of kind of, uh, um, of something else that'll be bigger um, because there's a lot of ideas. I got a lot of stuff going on and I need to just house all this in one spot and make sure that the, the imagery, the presentation, everything. So there's going to be a new website that we're going to be releasing soon. Um, and so when that, once that, uh, releases, I don't know when this will be published, um, but that will be forevermedia.com. Um, so that will be where everything will be located. And then from there, it'll be kind of a hub for everything that, um, that we're about. So you'll be able to check out relatable marketing, a ton of video content. We have our speaker agency, uh, coming up soon. So there's a lot of things we're getting into. That is incredible. The growth that just in the few months that I've been with you guys, um, is just incredible the way you're, you're expanding and, you know, and doing it thoughtfully and making sure that there's kind of a community of people moving with you. Yes. I think it's phenomenal. So, so important to me to, to bring people along with and, and, and just make sure everybody sees the vision, sees what we're trying to do. And, um, so we're just doing this one last rebrand and then we'll have these different divisions that will be there, um, to really help and, and cater to all the things that we're doing with people. Um, so it could be one cohesive unit um, to really supercharge uh, people's marketing, sales, um, and overall to reach their goals. Fantastic. Thank you, Jamar, so much for your time today. I always yes, love talking you. to you. And today we got to talk about you instead of, you know, all of my vision. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Flip the script. <laughs> I did. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. The Living Corporate is brought to you by The Break Room. Have you ever felt burnt out, depressed, or otherwise exhausted by being one of the onlys at work? You know what I'm talking about. Hosted by black psychologists, psychiatrists, and PhDs, The Break Room is a live weekly web show in the Living Corporate Network that discusses mental health, wellness, and healing for black folks at work. Name another weekly show explicitly focused on mental health, wellness, and healing for black folks at work. I'll wait. This is why you got to check out The Break Room, airing every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on livingcorporate.tv. Okay, how great is Jamar? Every time he talks, I take copious notes. And it seems like every time I talk, he must take copious notes too because he always knows um, exactly what I need to be thinking next. I love working with him and I'm so excited that I finally got to interview him for this show. If you enjoyed this episode even half as much as I did, don't forget to subscribe to Living Corporate and share us with your friends and colleagues. You can also meet your favorite guests and join the conversation on our Slack channel at c2bchat.com. That's the letter C, the number two, the letter B, chat.com. And hey, you can really help us out by leaving us a six-star review wherever you get your podcasts. If you're new to the show and you're saying, but there's only five stars... Give us all those stars, but then go the next step by leaving a couple sentences in your own words, telling us what you liked about the show or the episode. Don't forget to visit living-corporate.com to learn more about our podcasts, videos, web shows, and more. See It To Be It is brought to you in part by Lead At Any Level, a certified woman and LGBT-owned business dedicated to helping organizations build inclusive cultures and diverse leadership pipelines. Lead at any level. Leaders can be anywhere and should be everywhere. Learn more at leadatanylevel.com. That's it for this episode of See It To Be It. 
This is Amy C. Wanninger, and I'll see you next week. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.